Hi, I'm Elisa Davidovit. Hope everybody had a great week and a meaningful and easy fast on Yom Kippur. I know for me that this was the easiest year so far, and a few people told me the same thing. So I'm just actually curious what your experience was like this Yom Kippur. Maybe Hashem had Rahmanis on us. So usually every week, as you know, I do a portion, the Torah portion of the week. And it turns out that this last portion in the book of Dvarim Deuteronomy, which is Vizot HaBracha, doesn't have a Shabbos where we read it on. So a lot of times it's overlooked in the sense that rabbis won't give commentary on it. And it kind of just blends in with the holiday of Simchat Torah, where we finish reading it on that holiday, and then we start anew in the book of Genesis. And I was thinking, you know what? I'm tired. It's been a long year. Maybe I'll subscribe to a new religion. I just found this uh, phrase called lazy docs. So I won't be orthodox, I'll be lazy docs, and I'll just let it go this time and let it slip. But then I realized, and quite quickly, that you have to finish what you start. And that's not just something our mothers taught us. That's something that our religion also teaches us. That when you do a mitzvah, you can't just leave it in the middle. Let somebody else do it or abandon it. When you start a mitzvah, you have to. You are obliged to finish it. Otherwise, you don't get the credit for it. So, of course, the yetzer hara, the laziness, the I don't feel like it, I'll start again strong and fresh, you know, with the book of Genesis and, you know, God created the heaven and the earth. But you can't start again until you finish what you started to begin with. For instance, you want to get remarried. you got to get divorced first, right, before you get remarried. You have to finish what you start. And that's why the word in Hebrew for shalem, complete, is also related to the word shalom, which means peace. Wherein does peace reside? Where everything is in its place, when it's fulfilled. And the funny thing is, is that if you f start a mitzvah and you don't finish it, and just let's say you defer to someone else to do it, you do not get credit for that mitzvah. And we have an example of this with Moses himself. Moses is the one who found Joseph's bones in Egypt and took them from there as was promised and was bringing them into the desert, was going to bring them into Israel when he thought that he was going to actually go and God would let him in. So it was Moses who was involved in that whole effort. And yet, who gets the credit? Not Moses. Israel itself, the people, get the credit. And it says, And they buried the bones of Joseph, which the Jewish people had brought up from Egypt in Shechem. And it's written in Joshua 24, 32. So the question is, why does it say that the Jewish people brought it up from Egypt and not Moses? And the answer is exactly as what I said before. When you start a mitzvah and you don't finish it, you don't get the credit for it. Where does blessing lie? Blessing lies in something that's complete. Let's take a very silly example, but a serious one. If a pilot takes off and decides midway he doesn't want to land, you have a problem. When you take off with a mitzvah, you have to finish it. And our approach to every mitzvah in the Torah is that it has a beginning and it has an end. If you undertake to give charity to an organization, you have to continue doing it. If you undertake to say Kaddish for a parent, you can't wimp out, you have to complete it. The mitzvot are relying on you. The light in the universe is relying on you. If you say that I'm going to start to pray every morning, you can't just start and then stop. Anything that you undertake, and for sure with the Torah, but anything that you even undertake in your secular pursuits that are of good and for the good, like going to the gym or taking a course or, you know, your business pursuits, you have to finish what you start.
if you want blessing to come upon you. And the thing is, is that sometimes we use that as an excuse to not get started at all. And we say, oh, it's too much for me, there's no way, because then if I get started, then I'm going to have to finish. And, you know, so it's, it's like an opt-out plan. So our sages are very smart, and they know human nature, and Hashem for sure knows human nature, because He made it. So in Pirkei Avot, Rabbi Tarfon says, it is not your responsibility to finish the work, but neither are you free to desist from it. So yes, it sounds like it's a little bit of a contradiction. What do you mean we're not responsible to finish the work? Yes, you are responsible, responsible to finish the work, but the truth is, if you will finish, will never be in your hands. That will be in God's hands alone. Moses intended to finish the job, to take the people out of Egypt, to bring them through the wilderness, and then bring them to the promised land. That God didn't let him because of his sin, that's another story. But just because... We think that maybe I won't be able to finish or I won't be able to do it is not an excuse not to get started. When you complete something, it changes who you are. It turns you into a mensch. It's all about shlemus, to be a complete person. How do you become a complete person? By completing the things that you are obliged to do. It turns you into a mensch. And I remember, it's a funny thing, when I was in Israel for the first time with my school as a teenager. And I have to tell you, I was never good at camp. I'm not that type of person. I'm OCD clean, and I'm just not a camper. Nonetheless, my first time really away from home, and I'm in Israel, and I'm in a kibbutz, and nothing there is as clean or as organized or anything as I would like. So... I decided that I'm going to pretend that a family member died and I have to go back to North America immediately and I convince my mother to go along with this excuse because I am ready to quit and get out of there and get on a plane and come home. So I presented my fictional story to the counselor at the time, the head of the group, and whether he believed me or not is debatable. I'm sure I'm not the first wise Alec and... Uh, you know, spoiled American girl who uh, wanted to run away. And he said to me, I'll help you any which way you want to go. You want to go home? Go. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you quit this, you're going to quit everything the rest of your life. Now I have to tell you, I don't know why it resonated with me, but it did. So my dead relative became undead. I unpacked my bags again and I stayed and I stuck with it and it was a trip that changed my life and it changed me because when you finish things and you do things properly you become a mensch. All things come to an end, right? Life too. But going with the theme of things coming to an end and just to stick with some of the concepts that are in this week's parasha is also uh, the mourning over Moshe Rabbeinu's death. It says that the Jews mourned for Moses for 30 days. Their mourning and their weeping came to an end. So why is it so important to tell us that the mourning came to an end? And it's a lesson for us in life, because even someone as great as Moshe Rabbeinu to lose someone like him who spoke to God face to face. Even mourning somebody like him and having such a great loss in life, we have to get over it. We have to know, as they say, there's a season for all things. In our lives, so often we mourn over the past, over lost opportunities. We are so upset about things that people did to us. And if you have a conversation with some people in your life, you feel like it's Groundhog Day, you're having that same conversation for 20 years. They're still moaning and upset about whoever hurt them or what they lost and how they could have been so rich if they would have bought this property. And uh, the marriage would have been great if the mother-in-law didn't get involved. And a million things. 
a million excuses, a million mournings over yesterday's stories. We have to learn to stop mourning. We have to go on with life. We feel like if we hang on to that grief, that's our, like, our ventilation, it's our oxygen. No. That's not your oxygen. Those are your strangleholds. Those are the weeds that are stopping you from moving forward. So just like for the good, you have to complete a good deed, a, a commitment that you made, a resolution that you made, and not give up so easily, and really fight for your ground. And, you know, review yourself. Look for your weakest link. I know it's easy to say, but if you really examine your behavior, look for your weakest link. I mean, an example, just even gro grocery shopping, and you find yourself uh, starving, so you bust open the box of cookies, and you start eating, and then you're sorry, and then you, again, you're starting tomorrow your diet. I mean, look at your weakest link. If you know you're going to pig out in the supermarket, then eat something healthy before. Drink a coffee. When it comes to the religion, if you know that, you know what, I just can't do this because this friend, that environment, examine what's stopping you from completing the things that you want to do. So that's for that area. For the other area... You have to come to an end of your mourning, mourning over the past, mourning over all your grievances against all of humanity and, and blaming the entire thing on everybody you know. An end. If we can bury Moses, well, we didn't bury him. Nobody knows where he's buried. God buried him. But if emotionally and psychologically the people were able to bury Moses and move on, then we have to do the same in our own lives. If I wouldn't have finished this parasha, I would have missed something fantastic, really something fantastic. And that is the last letter of the parasha in the book of Tarim. The last letter in the parasha is the letter Lamed. Lamed, so why would I care about this last letter? You know, we just read thousands of words, and I'm worried about the last letter. Yisrael is the last word in the five books of Moses. The word Yisrael, the last letter, is the letter Lamed. If I would have missed that last letter, I wouldn't have been able to bridge it with the first letter that begins the book of Breshit, the book of Genesis, where we start again, where God creates the heaven and the earth. What's the first letter in the book of Breshit? Is the letter, the, the first letter, is the letter Bet. When you take the Lamed of Yisrael, the last letter in the last book, and you put it together with the first letter in the first book, you get the word Lev, heart. The Torah is the heart of the universe. It's the heart of the Jew. I have an auntie who's a scientist, and you would think that because she's a scientist and a published scientist, a respected scientist, a really brilliant woman, and she said a beautiful sentence to me, and she said that the Jewish people in the Torah are a liaison between heaven and earth. We are the heart of the universe. The sages teach that the entire universe and world was created for the sake of Israel, that, God, that the Jewish people should keep God's Torah. We start again soon. We're going to make a new beginning. But like I said, before you make new beginnings, you've got to kind of complete what came before. I'm very grateful to Hashem that He blessed me with the love of Torah. Because really, I love it. It's funny, if you would go, like, you know, a lot of my listeners know that I was a journalist for many years. I had a beautiful website wherein I've interviewed really some of the most famous people in the world. I have great pictures there with Clinton and Bloomberg and Netanyahu and Bon Jovi band members. I really, you know, I've... Really, I have a 
a great website. Except that if you go to my website now, you can't even see it because I forwarded it to my Torah blogs. That's how much it all means to me. It was a world of illusion. All I love about that world is how much it led me to appreciate the Torah and its everlastingness ever more so. Everything I did has driven me to this moment. It's, you know, it's, I think spiritually it's actually very interesting you know, to think of how everything I did in the past is now being forwarded to my Torah blogs. It's really a manifestation of the path that I took in life. So yes, I am a wandering Jew because I really wasn't going to do anything uh, on this parasha, so I really didn't focus on the road I would take. But I hope that the words that I spoke here today were meaningful to you and that you will take very seriously the idea of finishing what you start. And on that note, um, sometimes I have a hard time starting. Today I'm having a hard time finishing, so I'll finish here and have Rachmanis on my listeners. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach.